Welcome friends, welcome family, to Life and Surround, the Christmas edition for 2018. And with any luck, if this channel is still thriving, which means if I'm still interested in doing videos for the heck of it, we'll have a Christmas edition 2019 and so forth. But we're here this year, and it's time to get on with it. I don't own a Santa Claus hat, so sorry about that, but I did put on a green shirt and I did uh, scrounge up a few props for your amusement. I do want to preface this video by letting you know that I have a rather eclectic assortment of discs and even a download to discuss today. So, would you expect anything else? We're going to discuss a variety of formats. We're going to discuss a variety of mixes. All the way from 4.1 to Atmos and RO3D which are essentially 7.1.4 or 5.1.4. And with that, let's begin. The first album that we have here under the Charlie Brown Christmas tree is Handel's Messiah, Musica Sacra, Richard Westenberg, music director, yada, yada, yada. They list everyone involved. This is a high performance CD. So the claim is that this is recorded, mixed, mastered in 9624, and then the transfer down to 44.116 still benefits the music and the sonics somehow. I so far haven't been very impressed with any high performance uh, disc that I've auditioned. I found them while perusing used music stores and saw the 9624 information and figured I'd give it a go. I simply haven't been very impressed with them. I don't find them to be superior to a normal CD. And in fact, this one on playback has a little bit of scratchiness to it. Even if you leave your receiver purely in stereo, or if you enable Dolby Surround. Which leads me to the thing that is geeky cool about this album. It does have this Dolby Surround logo, and so if you run this through Dolby Surround, in the old days, or on a receiver with an older form of Dolby Surround, it'll break the mix out into a kind of diagonal 4.0, where you have a somewhat discrete center and a somewhat discrete rear, both in mono and then stereo left and right, and it's sort of... a equivalent to matrix technology where none of the channels are entirely discrete, but you do get some unique information in all four of the channels. So Dolby Surround in theory is pretty cool. I don't find this disc to sound particularly amazing. Like I said, it has some scratchiness even if you take off Dolby Surround and just go and listen to the stereo channels. There's a bit of scratchiness and the speakers sound fine for everything else I listened to today, so I think it may be the way that this mastering plays with my receiver. I'm not sure. You may love it. So it's an audiophile recording, high performance series of Handel's Messiah. If you feel like giving it a go and your receiver has Dolby Surround, you will experience some surrounding goodness. I just don't think that the sonics are, are wonderful. Furthermore, my receiver when you set it to Dolby Surround, it gives you the maximum Dolby experience possible. So it actually played this back in 7.1.4, utilizing all my heights and my surround backs. So 7.1 down below and then the four height speakers up above. So anyway, that was cool. And I did have a good, enjoyable experience with this. I played track 12, which is For Unto Us A Child Is Born, because around this household, the line, for unto us a son is given, is very, very, very special. So I had a good time listening to that. And next up, we have Magnificat. Magnificat? Magnificat. By 2L. These guys are from Norway. Their thing is they go around and they record very carefully composed, orchestrated, music, assembling just the right team of people to pull the music off, and they try to record famous, wonderful acoustic cathedrals 
as well as can possibly be recorded, and then they seek to place those microphone recordings in 3D space or sometimes 2D space according to where the microphone was in the cathedral. So they try to place you in the cathedral for the recording. They try to turn your listening space into that cathedral sound. And I think they do a remarkable job. I have quite a bit of 2L that I will get to over time. But it's Christmas time, so Magnificat was the selection. And this so happens to be available in 5.1 DTS and 9.1 RO3D. So this morning I auditioned it in RO. And I gotta tell you, it's spectacular. It's amazing. The sonics are just impeccable. It's glorious, it's beautiful. If you don't have Magnificat, and you either have 5.1 or RO, or heck, even in stereo, they give it to you in 192.24, so super high resolution. It's probably gonna sound breathtaking, even if you have just stereo. This comes with not only a Blu-ray, but also with a bonus SACD, Super Audio CD. So the Super Audio CD contains stereo and 5.1 in order to get the maximum resolution stereo and also the RO mix, the 3D mix. You're gonna need to put on the Blu-ray. So very cool that they included both. There's a variety of formats that you can choose from, a variety of mixes, a variety of encodings. So very, very cool of them. This sounds just absolutely magnificent, which I guess is probably the translation of Magnificat. And you know, even if you're not religious, this is the story of Mary, the Virgin Mary. But virgin birth stories go back thousands of years, all the way to 1200 BC, as far as we can tell. Zoaster was born to a virgin, Horus was born to a virgin, and um, Jesus, obviously, his Christmas story involves virgin birth. So, whether you are devout or whether you're not, the virgin birth story is an ancient part of human wonder and mystery. So I recommend giving this a spin at Christmas time or just any old time. It's absolutely gorgeous. Good job, 2L. And I look forward to reviewing more of your stuff in the near future. Next up, we have a super weird and random selection. This is The Flaming Lips, Christmas on Mars. This is a movie that they produced more or less by themselves at construction sites around Oklahoma at night when the workers weren't there and at Wayne Coyne's house. It's very low budget. It has a lot in common with Eraserhead. The music is not like the catchy, poppy stuff that you're gonna get on Yoshimi or at War with the Mystics. It's very creepy and ethereal. It's very overbaked. <laughs> they call it mega supersonic, super sound surround. The movie begins where this silhouette girl shoots rainbow beams into each of your speakers so you can tell if the rainbow beam hits the surrounds at the right angle and everything. So I love discs that include sound checks and this one definitely has one. This movie is about the first child born to a colony on Mars and the hope that that represents while the colony kind of falls apart and they're running out of oxygen and this weird Martian guy comes and somehow brings a sense of peace or something. It's super weird. I wouldn't pick up this movie for a Yoshimi Battles the Pink Robots experience, but if you're into the Flaming Lips and you can handle super overcooked audio. There are some cool surround moments like special effects, sound effects, and some of the music. My wife and I are pretty weird, so we pretty much watch Christmas on Mars every year at Christmas time. I like it. It has a companion CD if you get the correct version. So DVD, CD, The CD is called the soundtrack, but I think it's shorter. It doesn't have all the music from the movie, so it's more like highlights. The best mix available on this one is Core DTS 5.1, so not extended DTS 9624, but plain old ordinary DTS. And for mega, supersonic, super sound surround, it sounds 
just fine. I'm sure it just doesn't get any better. Next under the Charlie Brown Christmas tree, appropriately enough, is a Charlie Brown Christmas. The Vince Garaldi Trio. This was put out by Monster Music back in their Super Disc DVD phase. Quite a few Super Discs came out on DVD and this disc is very cool. It gives you a variety of mix options. It allows you to be on stage at a jazz club with the Garaldi Trio. It allows you to be front row in a bigger concert hall and it allows you to be on stage at that bigger concert hall. That's not just a matter of the reverbs that they used, although that's part of it. They also changed the position of the instruments around you, so you truly do get quite a different experience with all three mixes. I recommend trying all three. And This is a super wonderful, ultra, ultra classic recording. You will never hear these songs sound better than this for a three-track recording, bass, percussion, and piano. They have done some amazing things with this, exactly how they broke out all those parts they don't really go into, although there is a making of video that's really nice. You're going to experience this ultra classic recording in a brand new way three different times. So if you don't have Charlie Brown Christmas by Monster Music on Super Disc DVD, you really, really, really need it. <laughs> And as I talked about DTS Core for the last album, this actually has extended 9624 DTS. So this is high resolution. It's just not what purists would consider lossless because the DTS is lossy, it is a compression. But to these ears, this sounds fantastic. I don't think the DTS compression hurts this one bit. It breathes, it has warmth, it has life. It's vibrant, it's wonderful. The Misses and I, and now Little Baggins, listen to this every year and just enjoy the holy heck out of it. So I totally, totally, totally recommend this. Next up under the Christmas tree is AIX All-Stars Surrounded by Christmas. Now AIX is a super cool company, or at least they were. Maybe they are, maybe they were. I should have done some homework on that, but um, you all can. Don't know whether they're still putting out music in the same fashion that they did at this time, but what their philosophy was, was they set up everything from the recording environment to the recording equipment to the performers that they had in mind. I'm sure they went over song selection and arrangement and everything from the ground up so that you have a very pure 9624 high resolution experience and they put it out on DVD audio advanced resolution or MLP I'm not real sure but it is a lossless format all right so we're not talking about extended DTS we're talking about 9624 DVD audio technology and then the cool thing about this dual disc is on one side you have DVD video and so you can watch the performers do these songs and then if you want the absolutely lossless advanced resolution experience, you can throw on the DVD audio side and it's labeled like DVD audio this side up, DVD video this side up. So these guys are super cool. I don't love all AIX releases because I think they focused so much on sound that sometimes the performance is a bit lacking and I may review some of those videos later on. But in theory, what AIX was trying to do keep that signal chain pure it is a very cool concept and when the performance really merits the care that they put into their sonics they're just a knockout so ultra 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 highly recommended AIX All-Stars Surrounded by Christmas this is a fantastic experience fantastic sonics uh, can't recommend it highly enough if you are into jazzy arrangements of Christmas music, go for it. And next up, we have just a single song selection from Jethro Tull's This Was. This is their original debut album, remixed into 4.1 by Stephen Wilson, 
amazingly from, I think, a four-track recording. He took a single track, and if it had guitar and a vocal and some percussion or whatever, he divided it all up, so instead of just four different tracks to play with, he carved them all out into eight or twelve or how many ever tracks, spread them all around. This sounds amazingly close to a modern 5.1 mix. It's very full. It obviously doesn't sound quite as good as Aqualung or Minstrel in the Gallery or an album that he had more tracks to work with in the first place, but it is absolutely amazing how good he made this was sound. Because with these Jethro Toll packages you often get extra songs. One of the songs is A Christmas Song by Jethro Toll, and it's cool. I like it. It seems to be just trying to remind people uh, about what's really important around this time of year, and so I'm glad that it got included in this set. It was a worthy few minutes of entertainment and reflection, and Stephen Wilson did absolutely astounding things with the 4.1 of this mix. So I recommend this was. And it's got nice Christmassy colors, by the way. Not only for the album, so you can hear the history of Jethro Tull, it's their debut. You can hear where they started and then be astounded by the amazing progress that they made but then you get a Christmas song as one of the bonus songs. And next up, we have John Lennon's Legend video collection. And among the included songs is Happy Christmas, War is Over, or Happy Xmas as it's written, but that's a cross, so I think it's meant to be said as Christmas. Anyway, you get DTS 5.1 of Happy Christmas, War is Over. This is probably the most disturbing thing <laughs> that I have partaken of this Christmas season as I've tried to get into the holiday spirit. The video contains nothing but violence, death, abject misery, poverty. If the lyric is somewhat ambiguous, but um, definitely hinting at the world not being a perfect place and to challenge us to reflect on that at Christmas time, the video is completely unambiguous. It is absolutely beating you in the face with the message that our world sucks due to power, greed, and I think that is a cool message to contemplate. It's a very challenging message though, and if you're looking to get into the holiday spirit, avoid Happy Christmas, War is Over from the John Lennon Legend set. It will do quite the opposite, most likely. But on a happier note, I also happen to have the Imagine box set by John Lennon, which just came out this year, and I'm super thrilled about it. It's a wonderful set. It has more information contained in an awesome book than a scholar could get through in a week, I'm sure. It has umpteen CDs full of demos and session takes, the original album, but it has not one but two Blu-rays, and on these Blu-rays, man oh man, you get not only the album newly mixed in 5.1, you also get the original Quadrasonic mix from like 1971, I want to say, and then on Blu-ray 2, you get session takes and outtakes mixed in raw format, so instead of going for a modern 5.1 presentation with the main band up front and peripherals in your surrounds. You have stuff like the drums pinned back in the surround left and bass in the surround right and vocals up front and piano up front. So you get a very aggressive, discreet experience on the raw mixes. But why am I talking about this set in this video? On Blu-ray 1 you get two different versions of Happy Christmas, War is Over. You get the original mix and you get an alt mix. They're both very cool. <laughs> you have mainly uh, John and his guitar up front, supported by some of the other band elements like drums, and then you have and then you have supportive parts in your surrounds like 
I think it's Yoko Ono singing the female part. I couldn't find any information about that, so I have to assume it's her since she's a co-writer. And the kids' choir and some hand claps and stuff like that in your surrounds. So very well done. And the lyric to Happy Christmas War is Over is a bit more ambiguous than the video. And this song has even become a popular inclusion on many Christmas song lists. So, you know, it's happy enough if you don't think about it too much. <laughs> so this is definitely a cool experience at Christmas time if you have this set or if you plan to get it. I will go into more depth about Imagine and some of these other titles in their own videos. And that leads me to the last album that I want to talk about today. It's called Winter Solstice by Marcus Ruder. I know of Marcus Ruder from Stickmen Deep. Let's see if we can find it. I bet you already see it. It's right there. I know of Marcus Ruder from this album, Stickmen Deep, which in surround is super cool if you're into more progressive instrumental type stuff. You can't go wrong with this. But for the holidays, and I think to help out a very, very, very good friend to the Surround community, Jan Prince, and his website, surroundmusic.one, Marcus Ruder volunteered his Winter Solstice EP to be downloaded for free in FLAC 5.1, which I did gladly. I have to say that for the United States, the download is a little bit unreliable and a little slow. So uh, be sure to use a browser that allows you to resume the download if you get a failed download error, like Chrome will allow you just to resume it. I had to do that like four or five times, but eventually the EP was downloaded, it's five tracks. I wasn't able to listen super closely. as you can now understand. But at least three of the tracks seem to make reference to the melody from Silent Night. I'm not sure about tracks two and four, but one, three, and five definitely do. I wasn't always able to give this EP an ultra deep listen, but I will over the holidays. It is mainly ambient. It does have some melodic reference to Christmassy type stuff that you can lock onto and be familiar with, but it is mainly ambient. It's unassuming. It's the perfect thing that if you have some guests over or you just want to kind of be in the holiday spirit but think your own thoughts and maybe read a book or whatever, you can put it on. And it has plenty to engage in if you want to focus on it, but it just lets you do your own thing. So in my opinion, that's kind of like Roger Shaw's songs for meditation and other well-being moments. So I dig it. I think it is a lovely experience. And it's a wonderful gesture that you can go to surroundmusic.one and download it for free. I'm not sure how long that'll be available, but it has been made so for the holidays. And I just want to say I'm not in any way, shape, or form officially affiliated with surroundmusic.one, but Jan Prince did author my album, Disturbing the Universe, to Blu-ray, for which I am eternally grateful. He did so very skillfully and very affordably. And then he also hosts my album, Disturbing the Universe, on surroundmusic.one and just takes a cut, kind of like bandcamp.com does. So he's just trying to provide the surround community a way to download surround content in a way that's very similar to how bandcamp.com approaches stereo. I doubt very much that he'll ever be able to quit his day job based on proceeds from surroundmusic.one because artists get the vast majority of the cut and artists can also set their own price. So I definitely want to encourage you to check out surroundmusic.one. I just want you to know that I don't really get anything out of that unless you download Disturbing the Universe, and even then I'm giving all the proceeds from that album to charity Medicine Sans Frontiers, 
or Doctors Without Borders, and I'm sure that some French speaker out there can correct me on my pronunciation, but all of my proceeds from Disturbing the Universe go to that charity. They always have, and they always will. So with that, I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope that it helps get you in the holiday spirit a bit. If you have some of these songs sitting around, I hope you spin them. Let me know about your experience. If you don't have some of these releases, go get them. And I guess I have some work to do this coming year to acquire some more Christmassy stuff to be able to review in 2019. And until next time, I just want to encourage you as you navigate your way through this holiday season to live life in surround.